Yes, a very good evening to you watching UBC TV. Today is the 19th day of January 2018. My name is Michael Jordan Lukomo. I welcome you back from the news bulletin by the ladies, Sandra and Patricia. And as you saw, one of our stories there uh, was education, where Makere University has concluded with their graduation and all that. The very moment we are still in the education mode, the education sector is still dominating the news. Uh, recently, we had the PLE results released by the Minister of Education, the Honorable Janet Kataham Seveni, and a number of other activities within the sector. And we dedicate this evening to have an insight into the sector, education, and get to understand it more. How can we change it? Where do we have a loophole? Who has to do what for the good of our motherland, Uganda? Michael Jordan Lukomo is my name. I'm here with a honorable former member of parliament, the honorable Naomi Kavasharida. She's the former woman member of parliament for Ntungamo, but she's so much into the education sector, that's why I took it an opportunity to have her here. Honorable, you're most welcome. Oh, thank you. A very good evening. Good evening. How are you I'm good. outside parliament? Um, I'm good. And uh, I'm trying to get used to be uh, being uh, not a honorable. Not, 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 not a like honorable. Okay, you're, you're, ever, you're always a honorable. But not being an MP. Okay. Yeah. Is there a difference between the two kind of situations? Uh, oh, definitely, yes. Because in the parliament, you are busy serving hmm. uh, people, those who gave you votes. Formally, you are it, work. It's like a, a con you, are, you are conditioned to do. You are their servant. Mm, you have responsibility to carry on. Yeah, but today I'm um, my own. You are a free lady. The free lady. Yes. A free away lady. from the formal perspective. Yes. yes. Personally, <laughs> I am. I'm doing my private work mm. at my ease. Okay. There is I relief. Think, yes. I, I'm so relieved. Really. Uh, a lot. A lot you of see, relief. For us, when we sit this side. Mm. We admire the people in parliament and all those big offices, and we think, really, no one would love to miss being there. Yeah, you are right to admire, because there is that honor. Okay. The honor is, is just a title, but what they face, what we face there is actually different. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a hot seat, because every time those people, those voters, they look at you as their savior. Mm -hmm. And with this kind of economy that is missing poverty, and with, they want you, they know that you earn money From and parliament. you must share with them. Okay. They know that uh, they voted for you, you must be with them in the programs, mm -hmm. you must be with them in, uh, when they lose someone, you must be there. Uh, whether you are in the parliament or not, they don't mind. You must go for burial, you must attend weddings, you must attend graduations. Well, a, a few of them still follow us, like now it is the <laughs> period of graduation. I don't know how many graduations I've attended. You may have in a constituent. Every day, every day, even today. <laughs> Before I came here, I had to first uh, attend one. But now you attend at a personal level? At leisure yeah. and a personal level, and okay. friendly. Okay, you're now so much into the education sector in your personal works. Mm. How would you describe the Ugandan education sector currently? Uh, well, um, I must say that it's an honor that you are asking me that question, though I'm not all that an expert mm. to, to, to be the one to talk about the education sector but in, your in, view, in this country. But in my view, mm. Uh, I think there is, uh, I, I don't know how I can call it, how education was, like if I compare how I, I studied and how people are studying today, there is a very big difference. Positive or negative? Um, some areas positive, some areas negative, but negative is bigger than positive, I should say. And I think there are many, um, I think the, it, it is caused by many factors. Tell us one. Uh, many factors, um, first of all, the population, our population in Uganda is increasing 
like I don't know what is happening. Uh, people are producing right now, and everyone wants to access education. But uh, the facilities or what to use in education does not match the population that we have. Uh, for instance, I've told you that they are positive and negative. The positive one, when this government in RM came, they realized that uh, there are some people who miss education because of money. They can't afford. They can't afford. Mm. So they decided to bring in UPE and USE. I'm one of the advocates of UPE. Me, I still say that it is a good thing. Although many people outside there, they curse it and they don't want you to, they don't want even to hear someone talking about you, but I want to tell you that UPE, it was a good policy, but when they brought it, I think it was hurried. It was, you know, when you have to do something, you need to plan. When you have to build a house, you plan, you put a plan, a foundation, and then do it. So this one just came, and uh, everyone was excited. They talked of four people Capers from our per, per family. family. Mm. But I want to tell you, nobody followed that. Each family, there's some people who take eight. You know how we produce? Mm. Ten. 15, you cannot stop them. But from their one families, family. you find so, a grandparent yes. with 12 bazukuru in a home. Yes, and they all went because free education. Ugandans, by the in way, fact, we, in my view, we like free things. In fact, in my view, uh, I don't think there was a way government would segregate. In fact, it would be segregation, actually. Mm. Only select four children from a family. No, it, it was not segregating. You know, whenever you have to start anything, you have to have where to start from. So they were testing. It was new in the country. It was new. In, so they wanted to say, let's start with four, which was good. Mm. But then people became excited and it was difficult to control. So they pushed all Everyone the children. Came so board. you find that in a class like P1, a class of 100 people, 200 people, Remember, there, there were no recruits for more teachers. There were no increase to in, match the change that in classrooms. Uh, so it, it, it became a big problem. Uh, but it has taken a while, and there is no much change. And even by the time they brought in USE, still, you know, the foundation was not yet firm. And then USE also. Came, came in, and then when it came in, uh, I think it found this one. Uh, there was a big gap, so that's why you see many uh, private schools mushrooming. The private schools, they are far much better than the public schools, except a few, which we call the traditional schools. There are some traditional schools; they do not accept UPE. They do not accept. USE. No, UPE, every school has, but uh, USE is, is not everywhere. So it caused uh, a, a gap, I think, a missing gap in, in education. Uh, and you know, any missing gap will affect even the future and the future and uh, the coming generation. Uh, and then w we overlook the tertiary. Uh, or vocational, because those people who go to UPE, really, there is a big gap. Because teachers who teach there, they are government uh, employees. paid employees. Uh, and these days, people tend to, these teachers, they tend to say that it's money is small. But at first, of course, what I did not mention was that even by the time they put in those many children, st the salary was not increased. I, it came about uh, a bit later, and uh, still it's not enough. So these people get got a more workload? Yes. And the pay was and not And the pay was not, not matching. Touched. Yeah. So the planning was, I, I think, it was good it started, but uh, it needed a lot of resources. Resources in terms of finance, mm -hmm resources in terms of uh, human uh, and many things. 
Uh, for example, if I tell you where I studied from, the teachers used to stay in houses, government houses. They will never go back home. These days, districts are forced to, 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 to take teachers, to post teachers where they are born so that they can accommodate themselves, they can walk a, a shorter distance to go and, and stay in their homes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there are no uh, facilities. There are no accommodation. There are no accommodation facilities. Okay. I was coming to this point. Uh, PLE was released last week. Mm -hmm. And like you said, actually private schools are still beating public schools. Mm -hmm. uh, one may say, it will be the same story in senior four when the results come and senior six as well. Mm. Are those things you're mentioning the, reso the reasons as to why this happens? Um, what is done in the private schools that we may have to adopt in our public schools to have positive results? <clears throat> First of all, I want to tell you that uh, the teaching in uh, public schools is actually different from the teaching in, in, in uh, the teaching in public schools is different from the teaching in, in uh, private w schools. What do you mean by that? Uh, what I mean is, I think in public schools, they still, much as there is that missing up of having heavy workload mm. and what, those people, they learn. But in private schools, you know, in private, if it is a private, private means they are... It's a business. It's a business. Mm. If I set up my school, I want to get something out of it. Definitely. And how do I get something out of it? I have to make it at least minimal infrastructure, put minimal infra infrastructure. Attractive. And attractive, mm. and also employ the people that I want really to employ. Uh, so they pick some good teachers, whom they call good teachers, and, and give them uh, jobs. But because it is my property, and I want to get something out of it, it is my business, and I want to get something out of it, they monitor them. So they want output huh? by hook or crook. By hook or crook. So if they are paid, Either it is 100,000 or 200,000, they work for it. When I'm in government school, uh, it's yes. And by the way, government school, today, they are better paid than in private school. Most of them in this government school, they are well paid than the, 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 the private schools. The teachers in the private schools. But of course, in the government school, there is this lax, eh? and there are those gaps which I've told you. So. Nobody is there to monitor. We used to have inspectors of schools. I was going to ask you about those men. The inspectors of schools, yes, they are there. But you find that someone has no fuel. Uh, some of them... As an excuse some or as a reality? You know, as a reality, because our budget. I've told you that uh, everything has to do with finance and then uh, human, uh, human resource. So they are there. Uh, if the government wants the teachers to be as good as uh, uh, in private school, they ha you have to monitor. When you take someone to work in a banana plantation, do you just leave that person after you, you go and work without even showing where to the someone uh, to work, and then afterwards you come and say you just pay? I think this is what is happening in, in the government schools. Mm. People are paid without being monitored on what... They are not assessed at all. They are not on what they have put in. The assessment could just be on the paper. Mm -hmm. But you know, you have to do that thing practically. These private schools, they are monitored. Technology has come, even some, even the businessman will sit here and monitor the teacher, whether they are teaching, whether they are doing just a prayer round. And then, they, they <laughs> I've told you that some of these... Where need be, they will even install cameras yes, in classes. Yes. Some of these uh, government schools, the UPE especially, and in the rural areas, at least in these urban areas, at least. But in rural areas, 
the parents cannot manage some, some of the incentives. So the teachers are on the, on the government salary only. So that means if he's sleeping at home, he has to go and milk if he has cows. He has also to, to go to his banana plantation because he's at times taking his child to a private school to get better education. Because he knows what they, happens. Yes, they know what is happening in, in, the, in, in, in the government schools. Mm. So, so in a way, UPE was not well embraced because of those uh, missing gaps. No enough teachers. How can a teacher teach 100 students in a classroom? Some, some areas, people still go under the tree. So how do you expect the student, uh, the pupil in that school to perform? Uh, that one who is in a well sheltered, uh, well uh, built school uh, with good chairs, uh, tables, and someone is writing and uh, use sitting like this and writing. So they, there is a, a very big. I, I have now two things that are running in my mind. One, mm -hmm. much as that is the situation. Mm -hmm we have people that manage to afford a first grade or even more mm. in the schools with that kind of condition. Let us start from there. How do they manage? I visited one of the public schools in Kampala <coughs> here. They had 120 pupils in P7 mm. and 62 got a first grade. Uh, they in, were actually in, 170. The public school? Yes. Mm. 62 got a first grade uh, like Thirty got second grades, and the other grades were shared by the people that follow there. How do they manage to get such grades in the conditions you're mentioning? Because actually, I know that they are true. First of all, those teachers, by the way, they try. My child, Oliver, all know whatever they try in, in, in those public schools. People teach, and and the teaching I've told you, the teaching in these public schools is they learn. The pupils there learn. The people learn. It's not about passing exams. No, like it's not about passing exams. Schools. Yes, mm. they learn. So when a student learns, when he gets a chance to learn, he grasps everything. And so when one gets actually first grade, when I want you to know that those people in those uh, public, public schools, schools, when they get a first grade, those are the people you find that they are doctors, they are good doctors, they are good engineers. Because the good. first grade they have is there is a genuine one. It's not a, a pumping Doctor. one. It's not a, they really learn and, and, and get. And by the way, it's not that those people who go to, uh, to public schools are, are, are stupid. They are very clever people. And you know that some private schools now, they go and give money in form of bursary. When they come to a public school nearby, they come and buy them. This has now become a habit. That's why even some of those people who come from private schools, they are not. Originally, they were students. They were students in, in a public school. So they go and say, you come, we want to give you bursary. And who does not want a, a bursary? So even those who pass in those private schools, they, they come from uh, public schools. So they, they try. I've told you that teachers try. They try and teach. But above all, the, some parents have known that teachers to teach well, they need some incentives. So those people in private schools, they, they have uh, other benefits that they get. Whereas these ones depend on salary only. Mm. So these ones have other uh, benefits. So some schools have got good management. They liaise with the Parents. The, the leaders in school, uh, that is the headmaster, mm. and then they agree on their own. They said, you people, if we want our children to learn, let's give some incentive uh, to, these, to these teachers. Although they call it like a, a bribe, government calls it a bribe, but to me, in my opinion, it's not a bribe. And I wish if everyone, where, everywhere where the parents can afford, uh, could do it. Where they have tried it, the schools perform like that one. If you went back to ask, they must parents must be paying. The teacher mentioned exactly what you're saying. Yes, people parents must be paying some money. It's against the policy 
of government. Mm. But I, I, when Actually, I was, it is uh, Buganda Road Primary School. Yeah, when I was still an MP, I would go and talk about it and tell you people, government gave you a good thing, the policy is good. But you have a way UPE, to support it. But you have to support it. You have to support it, you have to give lunch to, to your children. They cannot study when they are hungry. So contribute some money for them to have lunch. Mm. Because they, they, they fail to, to make this in Tanda, you know, Tanda, packing yes. food in the village. So pay some little money so that food, they can at least prepare some posho at school. So those who do it, it pass. And uh, I used it really to motivate the parents that pay some money. It is your school. Much as you want the government to do, it has done what it can, it has done. Government, so what is government your has 112 Yes, districts. so what is your contribution? But you know, I, I, I use even to argue with those other DCs, the other DCs who say, no, government policies don't pay. You know, people, when people go in a meeting, parents go in a meeting, teachers... They have a right to come up with an initiative. Yes, and they have said for own. us we want to pay. You should not stop them. Uh, and and uh, some in Ntunga actually they picked it and the schools... It worked for them. It worked for them. But of course, remember there are some areas where even parents cannot afford at all. So, where there are positive results, mm. they take on the kind of uh, message you're giving. Yes. Yes. If the you are other to dig, you are to, to make some research about it, mm. you find that parents are putting S something is being in done. some literature. Now, money. the other thing I was thinking about before we go for the break, mm. does the ministry know, because at least you, you must be aware more about the ministry than me, mm. <laughs> much as I'm in the information sector, mm. does the ministry know these mishaps within the sector they are running? Do they really know? They and know. if they know, mm. how come the loopholes are persistent? Uh, there is something that can come uh, uh, and you really find that you are unable uh, to sort out. So the ministry is trying. That's why they pass budget year in, year out. But uh, I've told you that uh, our economy is still not um, heavy or strong uh, to support that kind of system. Okay. Uh, Let's take a very short break. On return, mm -hmm. we shall start from what you think should now be done. Because much as we have an economy that has issues, mm -hmm. when again we have a need on the table, mm -hmm. definitely something has to be done. That's what you're going to give us on return. Okay. You're watching Pick a Point here on UBC TV. At this point, we're taking a very short break. I'm here with the Honorable Naomi Kavasharira, a former woman member of parliament. Probably only, but that's why you're giving us only facts <laughs> because <laughs> I don't think you have any interest now in giving information that is maybe whatever. And I thank you for that. Let's take a break. Do not miss what we have on return. Yes, welcome back from the break. You're still watching Pick a Point on UBC TV. The education sector is where we are concentrating this evening, and we want at least by the end of the show, whoever is watching, you will have picked a point. Your child's education is your responsibility. Whoever gives you a hand actually is giving a hand. <laughs> I'll term it that way. Honorable Naomi Kawasharida is the lady I'm with here. She's in the education sector. She has been a leader and she knows, and I'm happy she's handling issues in a factual manner. Honorable, I thank you for that. So you say we have an economy mm. where we cannot stretch government to give us everything because we are more than the resources we have, yes. but mm. we must have a solution for something. Mm. We need children that will have a quality education mm. and to have a better Uganda tomorrow. Mm. So what do we have to do? If you were to advise the ministry, what would be your message? If you advise, uh, to advise Ugandans, what would be your message? Well, of course, my advice would be to, of course, increase uh, on the resources that I told you, the finances and, and uh, the human resource. But from what I know, uh, our, our economy is still weak and small 
as far as uh, the budget is concerned. Uh, we have a lot. There is health, there, is, there are roads, we want this, we want. So meanwhile, what we get uh, as uh, taxes and or we have few resources, the only uh, resources that we are going to get is oil, which is also not coming. So really our income as a country is still small. But my wish would be that to add more money in education. Because it is education that make everything. It is education that, that you are here because of education. I'm here because of education. And uh, if the country education goes uh, bazaar, then we are doomed. So I, I would wish that the budget, if it was possible, be increased. They add more teachers and also give them incentives. You know, when someone has eaten, He's happy. He's a happy person. So By the way, I agree with so you. They, so the they need to, to, to I was talking pay. to a certain gentleman about pay. this very kind of topic. Mm. And he told me that to him, actually, he doesn't support government giving salary loans to teachers. Mm. That if it were, if he was government, mm. he would make sure these people have health insurance for themselves and their children, um, have good housing, uh, basing on their levels. Mm. that a senior teacher, head teacher, headmaster would have a bigger house than an, a new entrant. Uh, that, that avoids transport costs and things like that. Mm. Feed them, give them some free uh, some education services for the children. They would not admire having businesses. Mm. They would only go for these loans to start a home, uh, build a house and things like that, mm. or a farm. But he told me, just imagine, a man earns 500000 as a teacher. Mm. He gets a loan, because teachers can access all loans. Mm. He gets a loan of $10 million, starts a shop that gives, them, gives him a million shillings mm. at the end of the month. So he asked me, tell me, between the class and the shop, where do you think he will put more emphasis? Mm. My answer was the shop. Yes. So what do you expect? So what that guy told you is actually correct, and that is what is happening. I told you uh, before that uh, where I studied, that the, I don't know what I told you, but where I studied mm. in my primary school, the houses, the teachers had houses. Yes. Every teacher had a house. Every teacher had a house and even had where to if you want to dig and have some food and whatever, they would, they would have land. Mm. Uh, but today, those houses, and they were mud and water, those houses up to now, and we are talking of, uh, I was in a primary in 77. How many years are those, the houses? And they were built in, built in 50s. And I think even other primary public schools, they are like that. So you cannot expect so a teacher. Those are still the staff quarters. They, stay, they are still the staff quarters. 2017. Yes. 18. So you actually. don't expect someone even to go and sit there. So that is the negative on the uh, one of the negative uh, part mm. of the public school. Whereas the private, those are the incentives that they give their teachers. Their salary is small, but they are given accommodation. Some are given transport. Summit. So they, they are okay. Lunch is a must. Lunch is there. There is yeah. no way you will run away that a yes. for lunch. Our teachers, actually our teachers, we, we should give them credit. They try. Because the environment they work in is really in So that person told you it is, it is correct. If the teachers were given houses, they were given health insurance, they were given um, uh, transport and whatever, they would also teach exactly like uh, much as they are not monitored and what, but they will teach. But uh, why do you say they are not monitored? Um, would that stop the monitoring? By the way, what do you talk about that monitoring aspect? The monitoring because I agree with you, it must be lacking. The monitoring is really lacking. It is lacking, yes, I blame it also on, uh, uh, partly on, on government, but also the people that they put there. You know, people have developed a perception which is really bad. Mm. That everything for government, you just take it like that, which is bad. Because some of those people, we have some inspectors in schools, and they are paid salary. We have inspectors in those districts. 
they are paid salary. And they are facilitated. They are even, they are even facilitated. Well, at times, facilitation mm. cannot... Big pickup trucks. Uh, some, sometimes, facilitation is not enough mm. to make them move here and there. But you know, remember these rural uh, schools, they are not really... You can even monitor Askano, but they don't, they really don't do it a lot. The schools have been left to parents. Parents are the ones, those who are sharp and put uh, good management. That is board of... Uh, 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 board of governance. Of governance, governance. Uh, and then PTA. Mm. They monitor. So and in then, the villages then, where there are those serious parents, yes, the service is good. The service is good. Uh, and uh, the, the schools... Where there is laxity? The schools perform. Uh, I've told you that me, in my opinion, I would want, much as they say that it is UPE, mm. yes, government has done its part. Let's also, as parents, put in, so that we can get at least good education. Because Thank you so money. much, Honorable. It's good we put in some money uh, and get those first grade like they get in, 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 in private schools. You're so much in tertiary education. Mm. Mm. Yes. Makere University had over 14,000, 40,000, something like 14, that. Yes. 14, For the whole week, mm. those brothers and sisters are joining <laughs> the working industry mm. <laughs> where I am. Mm. Many of them who will be uh, on these good roads of ours, mm. good enough KCC has cleared many. Mm. What do you think about that? And in what kind of space do you have in your you're so much in the vocational side yes i am how are you people going to help us solve the problem of having people with all the papers they need for life which mm. may not end up helping them mm, what <laughs> you have reminded me of a certain man uh, just talking and he said that uh, he wants to carry because he has even the masters even what that i want to carry all these papers and take them back, either to your neighbor and so on, because they are useless to me. <laughs> because actually they are their well, papers. Uh, Makerere has produced 14. Uh, but I, th uh, I think in May. We are having graduations either until in May. Either May or what, uh, you see you will produce. Yes, care you, everyone. Have, yes, everything that comes up, comes up with advantage and disadvantages. Mm. We have got so many tertiary schools, they are producing, but they have no space to go. They have no jobs. So what do we do? Jobs, How can we help? The, the jobs remain uh, slim or small, whereas the people going for education are increasing. So still there is a big gap, a big gap actually, a big one. Uh, and it's a problem to, I think, to government. Something must be done to increase on uh, industrialization to absorb all these young to people. To absorb all these young people. You know, these young people, they will become, I see them as the dangerous weapons in the future because when someone has no job, has no money, has no what, they might end up being. But okay. uh, we pray that um, uh, there is a solution. The solution is to create jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also uh, want as to... As vocational to, uh, trainers. I would also want to advise mm -hmm. That, that maybe we go so much in vocational. The, the, the government is trying to introduce, is it skills? Mm, skilling Uganda. Skilling Uganda. I wish they could put much effort. Because that skilling Uganda, it teaches someone, you learn rather than just uh, getting education to look for a job. But they, they, they create that one, makes you Somebody. Uh, somebody. You come out with a title. You come out that I'm an engineer. Yes, yes. But you know, we still have a, a problem that um, if someone gets a first, uh, they call it a first, uh, first grade in S4, mm. to tell someone that let's go to a tertiary school, uh, this for cosmetology, for you know, example. When we talk of uh, tertiary. It, it combines all of it them. Combines all of them. Mm. But, but going vocational. to these, these vocational schools, they will not. 
So that vocational schools, it is only that one who is very poor that can Why do you there. think parents and look parents at it also that look way? At it like mm. it's, uh, Why? Why have they not embraced it's, it's vocational a third, education? A third, well, the education, they don't embrace it. They have not embraced it. Why do you think so? Because you have interacted with them at the local uh, level. I, I think it is uh, rooted from the way it started, people wanting to go to the university and looking at people who have who are graduates better than those who have taken up this this line. So they compare because a journalist like me with a carpenter, not knowing that actually this man may earn some good millions good at the end of the day more than me. Yeah, but someone getting a first grade to go to and do, or someone who has got triple A, mm. you cannot tell him to become a carpenter. They won't. So what are you going to do? In uh, fact. Maybe there is a problem with you people in this vocational training field um, that you have not promoted it well. You have not given the good message to the people that it is actually the way to go. Yeah, it, it is only coming up now, and I, I pray that people embrace it and really uh, do it. But also, uh, what I wanted to talk about is uh, the, the training. Uh, His Excellency the President has talked so much about sciences. Sciences, sciences, sciences. Mm -hmm. But remember he's talking, but there are other people to, to do the implementation. Mm -hmm. When I was um, an MP, I, I landed on, on teachers who had very good idea why we fail science. And then we sat like this and they told me and I listened. I thought they had something good. So I went on, I moved in the ministry, I introduced them here. This, the teachers, science teachers, good science teachers, they made themselves into an initiative. And I want to tell you, they said we want to tell you that why people fail science, which is actually the engine of maybe mm. technology and technology, everything. Technology, yes. yes. If you promote science, then you have done well. Uh, but that one shouldn't mean that those people who, do, uh, do, uh, who don't do science are not. They're also good, but science is it's an engine. So this boy, these guys, I've tried to introduce them everywhere. Even when we were in, uh, in Changkwanzi, where we meet as the caucus, uh, the caucus yeah. I mentioned it. I've been to minister, and what, but nobody seemed to. What these people have, let me just give you a, a, a simple example. Mm. They, they simplified. You know people in, in class, when I was uh, studying like chemistry, I never used to like chemistry and because of the way maybe they are teaching. I think if I had learned from these books which they have produced, I would have also maybe learned chemistry and liked it very much. So they- I always they thought I was alone. Because I you found know, a friend. You, you, you remember uh, Bansen Banner? Yes. Simplify it like that because they told me, I said, hey, you know, Bansen Bana, you just say Bansen Those Bana. Those very long equations. Because and Bansen Bana, it is foreign. Mm. And then Bansen Bana getting it in uh, deep in the rural areas is difficult. The laboratory, they don't have. So Actually, I've met those teachers, I think. So they said, instead, let's make it simple. Where even a school in Karamoja can also do practicals. And they said, the practicals. Sciences fail because they start practicals in like S3, S4. Practicals should be started right away from primary. So they have produced books, very good books. But I want to tell you mm -hmm. that nobody, nobody is bothered. Mm -hmm. And is, it, it is a concern. They are teachers. They pick themselves. They know themselves from yeah. different good schools, Budo, where the best teachers in science. I've ever been with this spokesperson called Gochal, yes, somebody. Very genius. Yes. And they have been to me, but nobody's mm. right. I, I tried myself, my level, my level best when I was there, and I've now given up. So what they do, one example which I can give you, maybe even the viewers can also pick up. The Bansen banner, you know what it is, the ruminous and non-ruminous. Mm. So they said to do it easy. They made it practically. You get a charcoal stove. You know a charcoal stove can cook, but a candle cannot cook. Can the much candle, as they both have Candle fire. produces, mm. much as they have fire, candle produces a light. This one produces a light for cooking. So this, when you, when you are to tell someone a balance and burn and, and you bring the charcoal, is there anybody who does not know the charcoal stove? 
Is there anybody who does not know Tadova? The Tadova, you know the Tadova? I know it. Who can do, this is this people who can do. Produce light and this one cooks. So the difference is non-luminous and luminous. So very simple. So they, they are not so that, I don't know how, what, what I can say, but the ministry is not doing that. So teaching also matters. Mm. People to learn and come out with something that is very valuable. Uh, I have um, a small institution. It's, yes. Uh, I, I'm involved in, I, I worked with a guy who studied outside. Mm. So he kept on telling me this thing. Then I picked the interest. So we started the company together and we, we actually take people out. But in that, we meet universities, different universities, uh, big universities, America, Canada, and where. And then there are agents in different uh, developing countries. So you meet in certain meetings. And, and from there, uh, uh, we picked uh, one of the he was a, is a British. We interested him to invest here. So he came and we started uh, a school. A vocational school. So teaching. What's the name of the school? Where it is, is it called the uh, Axil International School and it's found on Entebbe Road, mm. just slightly right after the roundabout of Chibuji. Okay. But I see the way they are teaching. Mm. That's why even someone I I in the UK, when he's like in P7 and you compare him with the P7 here, they don't match. It's the way they teach. It is hands-on. If they are teaching you this pen, they will tell you this pen, how it is done like this, and, and you learn it. If you don't, they will tell you, no, you have not learned. They will ask you, you have not learned. You do it you learn until you have learned it. So that kind of teaching is missing. That's why I compare it with that science uh, books yes. which these teachers have produced. Mm. and they are not given that is making in, in everything school. practical and i picked some of those books and the schools that i gave them to in mm. tungamo mm. i'm telling you the chemistry if you compare the chemistry they used to do and today i tell you i wish i had them. so so with the practical teaching as we wind up what yes. kind of vocational uh, courses do you have in your school um actually they are mixed up uh, we have the, those vocational and then we also have uh, these normal ones mm. which people are using okay. uh, the business and whatever but the way they are all taught mm. you know here even the system of ours takes long for us here someone in S4 you'll come and study mm. and even get a diploma and then it's like uh, a pathway it takes you to you go and then continue another uh, uh, you, you do two years and then you go outside and study one year in a, in, a, in, a, in a university and come and you graduate. So the diploma I get cannot those, be questioned. Those, you know, it cannot be questioned. When I go to parliament. It, it, ca <laughs> it, can, never be, it can never be questioned. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a well-planned well, uh, system. And Thank you so much, Honorable. And the British and the Canada use. So it's As we wind up, just a message mm. from you to the Ugandan watching you, especially about the education industry as we wind up. Uh, I want everyone to get concerned mm. in, in how our education in Uganda is today. And, and not get concerned to do it as business, but look it at something that will help our country. How do we do it? Well, the members of parliament, let's them, let them try. They are the ones who make the budget. Yes. Increase on, on the budget. Uh, to look at the teachers, increase the number of teachers give them incentives, like we have talked about, mm. accommodation, uh, a teacher salary. should, salary, a teacher should look. Whatever would motivate a, them a, a, a to do a good job. But also, parents should not leave this school. That's why I said everyone should look at education as something that is important. Should not leave their schools to government only. They should also contribute. In their capacities. In their capacities. Those who can. Yes, the government put on a policy of uh, not paying school fees. Mm. Yes, I agree with it. But those who can, the parents, when they agree, let them put in some money for, the, for their children. Thank, Thank you so much, you. Honorable. So yeah. much. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Her name is Honorable Kala Sharida Naomi. She's a former woman member of parliament for Ntungamo. But a Ugandan 
and the Ugandan at heart <laughs> with the way uh, we have shared information here. Contribute based on your capacity. Each one of us can do something. You will just cry foul because your child has not passed, but what was your contribution at the end of the day? That is all we had for you. I'm sure you have picked a point. My name is Michael Jordan Lukomo. On behalf of the whole team here, wish you all the best. Let us give you room to watch news. Good night. <laughs>